Hello, this is Mark J. Boone, Assistant Professor in the Department of Religion and Philosophy at Hong Kong Baptist University. This is a video abstract for the first article I ever got published in the scholarly journal, The Unity of the Virtues and the Degeneration of Callipolis, published in Apeiron, a journal of ancient philosophy and science in the year 2011. The title tells you what the article is about. It's about the unity of the virtues. This is a theory that was important in the writings of a number of ancient and medieval thinkers. It's the theory that you cannot have one virtue unless you have them all. The virtues stand or fall together. The article is also about Callipolis, the beautiful city described in Plato's Republic. This city, as we are told in Book Two of the Republic, is described as a way of understanding justice written in large letters. Socrates describes Callipolis in order to help Glaucon and Adamantus understand the nature and the worth of justice in the soul, in an individual human life. The thing is, in order to understand justice in the individual better, we need to look at justice in something bigger than the individual. We need to look at justice in the city. Now in Book 8, we have the story of how that city, Callipolis, declines. And we also have a parallel story of how the soul may decline, and we switch back and forth between city and soul in Book 8. What my article shows is that the story of this decline illustrates a unity of the virtues thesis, and specifically, a version of the thesis in which it is possible to have imitations or simulacra of one virtue, even when the virtues are not all present. The degeneration occurs in several stages. The first stage is the democracy, the constitution that loves honor. The democratic soul craves honor. The democratic city loves victory, especially battlefield victory. It loves winning. Now, Callipolis had all four of the cardinal virtues, as described in Book 4, wisdom, courage, justice, and moderation. What produces the democracy is the loss of wisdom, and what governs the democracy is an imitation of courage. It's not pure courage, but it's a long way from the vice of cowardice. This is the vice that courage becomes when it is no longer guided by wisdom. When we want to win, but lack the wisdom to know what we're fighting for, or when we seek honor for its own sake rather than honoring what is genuinely good. This imitation courage is unstable, and it soon fails. And this brings about the next stage of the decline, the oligarchy. The oligarchic soul values money above all, like Ebenezer Scrooge. And the oligarchic city is governed by a few rich people. But this is not totally vicious. The dominant character trait in the oligarchy is an imitation of the virtue of moderation. It's not the vice of self-indulgence, but it's still not the harmony and the good governing of the appetites that moderation is supposed to be, as described in Book 4. When this imitation moderation collapses, we get the democracy, the city committed to radical equality without regard to merit, and a soul which lives for whatever pleasure happens to come along next. The dominant character trait here is an imitation of justice, not true justice, which gives things what they deserve based on merit, but justice reconsidered as radical equality of all things or all people without regard to what they deserve. This imitation justice fails, producing the tyranny, the constitution with not even a semblance of virtue. The tyrannical city is governed by a single evil ruler, and the tyrannical soul is governed by lust. The tyrannical soul is actually a sex addict. Now, this, for a number of reasons described in Book 9 of Republic, is a miserable state. Nor is the tyrant in a city happy. The most miserable state possible is that of a tyrannical soul ruling as tyrant in a city. And this is the culmination of the main argument in the Republic, the argument of books 2 through 9, that we need justice and the other virtues in order to be happy. My article is available from a payron if you have access to that journal. Alternatively, you should be able to find a version of it on my academia.edu profile, but with different pagination than the printed version. The article is recommended for anyone seeking a basic understanding of Plato's ethics. Although I recommend Plato itself, I recommend the Plato himself, I recommend the Republic itself much more strongly. Thanks for watching.